Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ken Coates. I'm at the University of Saskatchewan, a faculty member there. Um, I always tell everybody I'm also from the Yukon, since we all have places that define us, and I am defined by the Yukon very profoundly. I'm an historian by training, and I work on the sort of the social impact of science and technology in the contemporary period. But I'm going to talk about something. One of the great things about walrus is you have no idea what we're going to talk about. Uh, and in fact, they don't tell us what to talk about. They said, here's your topic, mobility. And I'm going to talk about a kind of mobility we don't think about very often. And that's actually the mobility of people from rural and small town areas coming into the big city. Um, if you look, we always talk about Toronto and all the other big cities, these great migrant communities with people coming from around the world. And it is one of the phenomenal strengths. It's not a surprise that four or five of Canada's biggest cities always show up in the top 20 cities in the world. We have great cities that welcome people from all over the place. But we are in the middle of one of the greatest migrations in world history, and that is people moving from rural areas and small towns and, and moving into the big cities. We are creating and have created a city-state economy. The five biggest cities in Canada are responsible for more than 100% of all of the jobs that have been created in Canada over the last five years. It means the entire rest of the country is a net loser in terms of jobs and opportunity. Ironically, we have great experience in integrating newcomers into our cities. We're very good in terms of people coming from other countries and doing so very extensively. We do this through social programs, do this through education, do it through a whole other bunch of sort of mechanisms. The, the people from other countries look after for themselves. They actually have wonderful self-help mechanisms for people from Bangladesh and people from India and people from China and people from the Middle East and, and what have you. But this dynamic, the rural-urban dynamic, is one that I'm afraid we've kind of forgotten about. In the same way that we've forgotten about rural Canada generally. Rural Canada does not show up on our radar. It did not factor in the last federal election. It hasn't factored in any of the last four or five federal elections. In 1901, 70% of all Canadians lived in rural areas. 70%. The number is down to 20% now, and almost half of those people live in the shadow of the big cities. They only live 150 kilometers or 200 kilometers outside of Toronto or Vancouver. Those areas are different in other ways. They have very few small young people. The young people have moved out and young people are not going back. There's more elderly, which means the cost of operating these cities gets larger and larger. Everybody who's spoken today has talked about their, their earnest desire to do more with Indigenous folks. Uh, Toronto is the fourth largest group of Indigenous people in Canada. Uh, and actually, that number is way too low. They sort of say it's about 45,000. It's probably closer to about 70 to 75,000. There are more indigenous people from rural communities and reserves from all across Canada, but particularly from northern Ontario. There are more indigenous people in Toronto than the Yukon and Northwest Territories combined in terms of the indigenous populations of those two regions. And we sort of if you look at their lives and they work around friendship centers and collaborate in communities and what have you, uh, they do not feel very much as a part of this particular community. Why are people leaving? They're being pushed out, pushed out by economic change, particularly in the resource sector. They're being pushed out by technological deficiencies. Um, it's astonishing how poor the internet is in many parts of the country outside of our, our urban sort of areas. Limited post-secondary opportunities, limited job prospects. They're also being pulled in by the urban mystique, the idea that the cities are wonderful, dynamic, exciting sort of places. Um, those people have not been on the 401. Um, once they have, the idea of Toronto mobility becomes sort of an oxymoron. Um, but they come to the city because of the sense of opportunities, the job possibilities, the real opportunities for post-secondary education, and the chance to be at the edge of the future. We have done a wonderful job of, of demonizing small towns. They look backward. They're sort of not progressive. There's no opportunities. So the people come into the cities, and they find themselves with some real challenges. They have a gap between their rural skills and, and urban skills. I always find it really funny, and even in Saskatoon, the very small number of young people who know how to change a tire. Something as simple as that. When we asked my daughter's friends, how do you change, what happens if you have a, a flat tire? I call dad. Uh, the answer wasn't that I go and fix it for myself. So they're cut off. People in the small towns are cut off from family and friends. They usually lived in homogeneous communities, and now they live in heterogeneous communities. The people from these rural areas struggle to fit in. We have to figure out how to sort of incorporate people in this rural migration as much as we possibly can. P more people struggle with this than you can imagine. They feel cut off and alienated from their home community. They're cut off from their old homes. Ironically, bus service in rural and small town Canada is disappearing. So they can't even go home in a regular and easy sort of way. There are exceptions to this. 
If you go to Vancouver, you can find Yukoners all over the place. If you go to a CFL football game, um, Saskatchewan Rough Riders rule, and so you can see them everywhere. In Calgary and Vancouver, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders play home games in those cities because so many people from Saskatchewan show up. Um, if you come to Toronto or to or Fort McMurray, um, you have a Newfoundlander on every corner. Uh, they tell great stories and they're great friendly people. So how do you figure out, how do you deal with this this diaspora, this, this urban migration. Technology gives us an opportunity that we haven't paid much attention to. Because of new social media, Facebook and Instagram and all these kinds of things, we have multiple ways of staying, staying in contact. But we haven't been very creative. Um, Japan has a wonderful connections between rural areas and the big cities. On Golden Week in the end of a April, people go back in huge migrations back home to celebrate going back from there. And you'd love this, Toronto City Council would love this. They found mechanisms that allow individuals to share part of their, 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 their residential tax income with their home communities. So you can actually designate up to 40% of your municipal taxes to your old hometown. So the old hometown can flourish and stay vibrant in the face of all sorts of major, major changes. Technology helps us offset these kinds of processes. We can do an awful lot more. We don't do very much, but let me give you sort of a few ideas of how we might do a better job of making people in the city feel connected back to their home, home communities and, and vice versa. Many indigenous communities have set up satellite cities, satellite units within cities, councils, uh, community groups, and whatever. Follow the indigenous model. They support each other uh, quite well. Um, we can offer people in the diaspora a, a place on their hometown councils. There are communities across North America that actually allow the people who no longer live there to actually vote in local communities. We can develop philanthropic connections, develop support services. We can do an awful lot better at making the people from rural communities feel like they belong with within the society and within the country as a whole. Our society is a network, and the rural network is part that we haven't paid enough attention to. These are real people experiencing real challenges, struggling with the difficulties of moving from their home communities, often multi-generational, coming into the big cities and facing major challenges of adaptation. Thank you.